friends here. Uh, next nice question. to see you guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, but this was all about. I mean, if everyone liked me, I would uh, it wouldn't be as nearly as fun. Oh, I happen to like. Uh, we there. chatted after the last one. Uh, that's all right. Um, this is a good question because it gets to the heart of a lot of problems. How can you cut taxes when the budget was in a shortfall? Can uh, you cut benefits to the workers while cutting taxes for others? It makes no sense to Doug. It's a great question, um, and it was a big struggle this year because here's what we've got. We've got a budget um, that is inflated in cost and uh, deflated in revenue. So we had a choice, um, raise taxes or make cuts. Raising taxes is certainly the easy way, but I, I, I always turn the question back. If you were one of the 1.1 million unemployed that used to have a job just a few short months ago, and now you are losing your house, probably your, your spouse, um, um, uh, your car, and, and you are broke for the first time in your life, do you want me to charge you more for a uh, McDonald's cheeseburger? Or do you want me to raise taxes in the back of the unemployed? Because we have an extremely high unemployment rate. So we, we went into the session. We went into the session with the idea uh, that we are going to balance this budget without raising taxes or fees. Um, uh, that meant now we have to take a, um, a razor blade and make cuts. Um, uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Bingley in the back will tell you that we took a big chainsaw to education. We took a razor blade to nursing homes. We took a razor blade to criminal justice. Um, uh, it was very it, unemployment. We cut unemployment from 26 to 20. Two week, twenty week, twenty two week. Um, um, we 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 uh, uh, reform. We we uh, <laughs> we, re we, re we reform. That, that was a Democrat. Here's what we're gonna do. Here's what we're gonna do, guys, ladies, ladies. I'm gonna be quite honest with you. Um, we can debate, but there's other people here. And so you're shouting out, I mean, it's kind of fun at first, but you're going to keep us here all night and, and, and not going to get to other people's questions. I'm just going to ask you to not shout out like that. And if you have a question about the baggy pants bill, send it in, I'll answer it. I'm not skipping anybody's questions, but um, just don't shout out like that. It's just rude. Um, so we had to make these very tough decisions, and it was a very difficult uh, uh, decision that we had to make. But at the end of the day, um, uh, and, I, and I don't mean to quote the governor by any means, but the governor was correct that jobs will get us out of recession and raising taxes will not. Um, and at the end of the day, we passed a budget um, that we we hope, and all you can do is hope, will attract jobs to this, this state. Because remember, in our belief, government doesn't uh, create jobs, it can simply attract jobs. So our, ju our budget is, is leaner and meaner, and uh, has a lot of incentives to bring new jobs to the area, especially uh, to the Space Coast with aerospace uh, type jobs. It was a decision that we made, and we're going to live with those repercussions. Many of you are going to work very hard to make sure I don't get reelected because I cut services and products, or services of the government, and I get that. And that's good. And some others are thrilled that I made those cuts. So it's, it's about being in government, and, and um, it, it was a tough year. It certainly was. John? Okay. Just to show I'm not skipping, this one is uh, Jay Mitchell's. It's about uh, insurance rates going up 15%. I think we covered that the better oh, part. covered no, we I want to know answer. why the legislature allows the insurance companies to do it without going to a commission to get approval. I don't want to give the speech again. If you have another question, sir, just write that bit, bad boy down. Don't shout out, okay? Okay. Uh, when will you? When will you come? It's not, ma'am. You just did it again. It's not the question. Yeah. This is about raising insurance rates. The citizens raise fifteen percent. He's talking about State Farm and their insurance rates. They're not the same question. And I'm going to run the show. And I'm really, I like you guys a lot. We had a great time after the last one. But you were, this, you've never been this room. You're shouting out. Just stop it, ladies. Yeah. Um, this one. Uh, when will, and I'm in parentheses there, you come to speak to local communities, again, specifically Melbourne Beach? Well, uh, I, I'm the easy one. <laughs> I'm just going order. Right off the bat, um, I have uh, done my best to get out there as, as much as possible. I remember the first right before session, I think I spoke with the Palm Bay Democrats. I had a wonderful, I don't know if any of you were here at Melbourne Beach, uh, my wonderful opponent uh, showed up and tried to grandstand. There was a mayor there who flat out lied about, I contacted her on three separate uh, uh, occasions. I had the documented proof <laughs> with phone records out of my office that showed that I called this individual, I won't name any names of the mayor of Melbourne Beach, uh, <laughs> but she, she, she never wants to sign. That's, that's absolutely fine. I know my opponents from, or my previous opponents is, is from that area, but I made every, uh, every, every possibility to meet with mayor of, of everyone in my district 
and I did meet with, actually took out, I think, five or six mayors out to lunch. Uh, and on top of that, I've been to probably every elementary school uh, in my district and met with principals and teachers, middle school, as well as high school that serves my uh, district, on top of a full load of teaching, as well as uh, starting a new business, as well as working with, uh, of course, you know, I have, I have a family. So, so I think Rich and I uh, do as, as much as possible, including these type of events. Uh, I, I have a niece that's less than 24 hours right now. I love you guys. I love Ellie just a little bit more. So, so the reality of the situation, I made this commitment, um, but Rich and I balance uh, and, and do our best to get out there as much as possible. And, and, and I will, whether the mayor or not, that's one person, that does not mean that it's this wrong me. I should be a better person. I'm not. Um, but I will uh, do my best. And I haven't been invited back to Melbourne Beach. If I'm invited back to Melbourne Beach, uh, I will certainly show up uh, to, to one of those, and I'm sure. That was the longest answer for a one line question. <laughs> um, uh, Doug, I liked your last question better. I'm going to read this one, and then I've got great news for you, sir. Your exact question is next when I speak again. So you're going to get it. And we didn't have to say it. Uh, it says, you are opposed to, quote, Obamacare, because you say the government can't force a citizen to purchase something. Yet, you passed a bill, yes I did, that forces a woman to purchase an ultrasound. How do you explain this? Doug, that's an excellent question. Um, uh, and you're actually probably going to want to jump in because your brother is a doctor and you have some facts on this. But we, um, the government, uh, mandates a lot of medical procedures when you go to get things done. You know that when you go to the doctor, they have to do certain things. Um, we feel that it's a, um, a good idea to require an ultrasound before you have an abortion. Keeping in mind that 85% of the clinics in Florida already do an ultrasound. All we said is that when you do it, you got to give the woman the opportunity to look at it. You don't have to force her, she doesn't have to look at it, you got to give her that opportunity. Doing an ultrasound in the dark um, is, and um, uh, keeping that from the, uh, the pregnant woman um, is, is something that we, we thought was, um, well, was goofy. And so uh, we'll never agree on this, those of you that are, are pro-choice versus uh, pro-life. Um, I think that um, birth, uh, life begins at conception, and I think that uh, um, if I can prevent just just one abortion in this state, I'm thrilled. And if it happens to be done because of an ultrasound, great. I know. I do, I, that's a better one. That's a 50-50. There's the boo on the one. That's okay. That's, that's a, we all know abortion is a 50-50 issue, right? I mean, it is. Good Lord. Yes, it is. Nobody likes abortion. It's choice. It's not abortion. Bill's got two questions here, and they're both very poignant. Uh, maybe three. Two. Uh, why are you anti-union woman, middle class, and my favorite, how do you sleep at night? So I will answer both of them. Let's um, hear it. <laughs> here I am right here. First of all, I'd like to ask a question. Go ahead, please. I'm just, re I'm just reading ahead. off of here. Uh, there, there was a, uh, a bill that uh, eventually didn't make it through, unfortunately, the session. I don't know if you were a co-sponsor of the Paycheck Protection. Uh, no, I didn't co-sponsor. I was a co-sponsor of the Paycheck Protection. Union dues are collected out of state paychecks. The state is in the business of collecting union dues uh, that are used for political purposes and a whole bunch of other purposes out there. This started in the 1970s before we had this wonderful technology today, and I co-sponsored a bill that would stop the state from collecting union dues. I'm not, I, if you want to be a member of a union, that is a-okay. If you want to, through debit cards, through mail-ins, the bill did not stop unions from collecting dues. The bill simply says the state is not going to collect those union dues. If that makes me anti-union, then, uh, then I will wear that, uh, and 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 that 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 was the big union bill this year. It did not go through. Okay, that bill did not go through. I uh, I just just so you know, I proudly voted for that bill as well. It did not. The Senate watered that one down. Never down. Um, never down. Yeah. Right. Um, how do you both sleep at night? I've got a Weston Heavenly bed with uh, sheets. <laughs> I sleep very, very well. 
I have a question though. I, 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 I'm a Florida State retirement uh, participant. 26 years. I have 26 years. I'm retired now. Now, the both of you, you're in the retirement system as being state employees. Are you going to contribute 3% of your, or 5%, whatever it is, of Three. your paychecks? 3%? Yes. yes. I'm assuming you're going to continue on after your, uh, your, your term limits are up. If they correct? choose. If the other side choose. If the, well, no, but will you continue? So you're going to take 3% out of your, well, yes. it's not, and again, you both, uh, I respect both of you, but I disagree with you because the 3% is going to hurt people. Middle class people. They're middle class people. You don't. You don't quite get yes. the, how you're affecting these are state employees. You're going to privatize the, the prisons in South Florida. Your, your, your governor, this governor, who I did not vote for, who I do not like, uh, privatized the, uh, the, the the prisons in South Florida. Right. How do you sleep at night with that? I'm talking about the middle class. I do. How do you sleep at night? Okay, I said my piece. You did. And, and, uh, <laughs> you did pretty well. And it, and sadly for me, it's not the first time I've ever any of that. Uh, I ran, I was the sponsor, the author of the FRS pension bill. I don't know if you know that. You're looking at, I, I, you are looking at the great saying to many uh, uh, government workers. Um, I, uh, I ran that bill. I think that in the end, I ran a, um, a very good bill. I think that um, I did not take away any earned benefits of anybody, um, which, was, which was huge because there was a big push to do just that. Because you earn things as you go along. I, let me, I, I ran an amendment to change the 3% to 5% to do away with the uh, all cost of a living adjustments. I had five or six don't, things in there. And, 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 and I'll, 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 I'll tell you what, I will tell you what. Rich in his infinite wisdom, and let me tell you, cutting anyone's pay 5%, 3%, or 1%, is difficult. Cutting people's pay that you see on a daily... I don't mind about my pay. I, 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 I do. do. <laughs> I will survive, okay? I have people, my legislative aide, my secretary, best yet, my secretary, who slaves... I mean, putting up with me is is incredibly difficult. Family has to do it. My, 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 my secretary does not. She makes in the mid-20s. Let me tell you how difficult it is to ask someone like that, or, or, or my mom, who is a, in the Florida retirement system, that they have to contribute 3% in a downturn economy. Let me, let me tell you, we have to balance that with the millions of people, the millions of people, the bulk of people that are in the state of Florida, but not in the Florida retirement system. And as an egalitarian, I believe we need to look at the good of the many, the bulk of the people out there that have to pay into the system to benefit a few. And, and, and I will tell you right now, Representative Workman, I in a million years, I knew he was a great guy, but this is someone that, that, that walked a tightrope. A tightrope, you fall one way or the other. He, he was in between members of the House, members of the Senate, the governor's office, the newspaper. I don't know how that came out there. I'll tell you, it could have been. No matter where you are, a heck of a lot worse. And, and let, he made let me this finish. Let me finish. Fair and it's Our state workers haven't had a raise in about five or six years. They also haven't had a mass layoff. Um, my my brother was laid off by our family business. Um, uh, there's a lot of people who got laid off, and so the compromise with the government job is um, we're how we 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 didn't lay you off, but you didn't get a raise. Um, we didn't lay you off, but you got to pay three percent towards your pension. Um, there's the silver lining in, in pension reform is that uh, as much as a uh, defined benefit plan is, is risky for a state, the FRS is in good shape. It's about 80, it's almost 90% funded. It's a great funded program because it's well managed by those darn bureaucrats in Tallahassee. I will tell you this though, even, sir, as a great funded defined benefit plan, it carries a $16.7 billion unfunded actuarial liability, which costs this state this year $496 million of the general revenue. I want you to answer, Brian, how I can pull $496 more million out of education to fund an unfunded liability or a pension system that could easily be funded um, uh, with modest changes. And that's the change we had to make. We had to say, how do we make them, if they want to keep the defined benefit plan, which they really, really 